Hello, Jordan. What's up, Michael? How you doing? Dude, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, my man. Last episode, we ranked fear and anger on a scale of 1 to 100. I don't even remember that. <laughs> it was a few weeks ago. We filmed a few in advance because I went to Florida. Oh, that's why we had a really busy couple of weeks. I was like, damn, we're just <laughs> cr cranking them out right now. <laughs> now we're back. Now we're back in our cadence. Um. We ranked fear. Oh, where we are on a on a scale of of uh, fear and anger. Yeah, you were twelve on fear, if I remember right. No, no, you were twelve on anger, and eighty eight on fear. Oh yeah, yeah, that's about right. Okay, cool. Where are you? Well, I I was trying because I ranked myself so low on fear. I was subconsciously oh, trying yeah. to think of things that I'm afraid of to bring to the pod for conversation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought of I thought of two. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, let's hear it. I, I came to the conclusion that I don't like heights. You're fearful of heights? I suppose. We had a balcony in Miami up on, you know, 15th floor in our hotel room and uh, like a really small balcony. I didn't like it. Like, were you fearful of falling off? Yeah, I think so. Not falling because obviously I'm not going to, but like, I don't know. Definitely wouldn't want to fall. Like, did your like, knees get like wobbly when you were out there? No, Jordan. Knees Did you not want to look over? When I looked over, there was definitely like, oh, this is uncomfortable. Interesting. Okay. Would you skydive? Would I skydive? Uh, I would have skydove at a younger age. I'm I'm completely anti-thrill seeking if there's any risk of death at this point in my life because really? there's zero. Okay. Yeah, there's zero upside except for the like adrenaline and and dopamine. But there's massive downside, even if it's, you know, one in a hundred thousand, one in a million, it's still the downside case is so bad. You die. Parachute doesn't open, you die. Jump out without a parachute on, you die. Even just like for the bucket list, just to check it off, just to say you've done it. One, I'd, I'd so much rather do almost everything else in the world. <laughs> Two, <laughs> it's, it's not on my bucket list. Like I just don't view, you ready for this? You ready for this? I would. Yeah. I would put doing the splits on my bucket list before I would put skydiving on my bucket list. Wow. Yeah. And we both and know you're not going to do the splits. And that's so. saying something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, all right. So you're scared of heights. So that's that helps us not at all. What's the other thing you're scared of? <laughs> Why doesn't that help us? <laughs> there like, doesn't provide any like uh, useful information. Oh, about unless, me? Unless like we... Yeah, unless we put your house on a mountaintop, but like that would be yeah. kind of cool, actually. Uh, and the other one is more, although I'm not really feeling it right now. But there's <laughs> definitely I, I brought this up to you. There's an element of paranoia around an AI takeover that I think these are your two fears: <laughs> heights and an AI takeover. I think so. <laughs> I think those that, are my two yeah, ears. You seriously brought those into the pod? <laughs> like, all right, this is going to be good. <laughs> well, no, not even that they're good, but just that they're true, right? Like, I don't know that they're okay. entertaining or valid or whatever, but I brought zero fears and I felt like I wasn't holding up my end of the bargain what here about on the like pod. like cancer? I feel like, can are you not scared of something like cancer? Yeah. I'll, That's I'll, a real fear. I'll catch a YouTube algo where they're feeding me a whole bunch of scary, you know, cancer stuff now and again, once every six to 12 months. But then yeah. I just stop clicking on it. Just and then so your fear just goes away? You're just no longer scared of the cans? You know what it is? Uh, I, I really try hard and maybe I'm naturally good at only focusing on things that are within my control. So if I, let's say I was afraid of something like, a, a, you know, a terminal illness like that, I would refocus it on what... What actions and behaviors can I take in my day-to-day -day life to minimize my risk of this thing happening? And then if it happens, it happens. Being afraid of it happening isn't going to change anything, except potentially increase the risk that it happens with, with some issues due to the increase in chronic stress from the fear. Mm. Okay. So AI takeover. I don't, I don't know anything about it and I don't have – maybe that's why I have some fear. Just – 
once we hit AGI and- What's AGI? Uh, it depends who you ask. There's multiple definitions. Some people say it's it's artificial. It stands for artificial general intelligence. When some some people say it's when AI is smarter than the smartest human. Some people say it's when AI can build on itself, so basically become like self sufficient. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'm much more afraid of a like having robot overlords in 30 years than I am of, I don't know, like a like a communist or a Nazi regime. And you get what I'm saying? You're more afraid of of robot overlords than like- Human overlords. Antifa or Nazi overlords. Yeah, I wouldn't even say Antifa because that just, I just think of like, you know, 20 year old, like angst, 2017, <laughs> Portland, Seattle, like nothing better to do, but, but, but actual, yeah, actual, yeah, poor, yeah. you know, human overlords. Because I'm, Interesting. Com- I'm confident in our ability against human overlords more so than I am against robot overlords. What, like the checks and balances that we have against humans? No, versus the no, like a like a fight. Oh, like an actual fight. Yeah, have you seen some of these robot videos? Like, and if if they're advancing at an exponential rate, I don't want to fight a robot. What what robot videos? I don't think I've seen these. Um, I haven't seen any recently. <laughs> you know, if if you're deep on if you're scrolling on Twitter, there were from Boston Robotics three four years ago. There's robots running and jumping and doing things which aren't that impressive right now, but. If you compare yeah, it's gonna, 10 years, yeah, like you can see yeah, the trend Yeah, they can just line. make themselves better. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then if you, and then if there's AGI and robots can build more robots and yeah. Yeah. And if they can analyze like how an, an elite athlete jumps and runs and how an elite mixed martial arts fighter fights and how an elite commando unit shoots and like if they can analyze that immediately and then upgrade it to their programming then they can do all of that and they can build more of them like that. Upgrade it to their programming or understand the pattern of what that elite athlete is doing and take it even further to a place where humans haven't even gone before to be stronger, to be faster, to be better. So that's what you're scared of. Look, I was just trying to bring two fears. I was trying to reciprocate. I was trying to be a participant in our own podcast. I like it. That's what we got. So those are your only two fears. Those are the two that came to mind for me. And you're pretty mild on the AI. A- AGI takeover right now. You're lukewarm on it. I just think it's a ways away. Like more than 30 years? No. But 30 <laughs> years is a long time. <laughs> okay. Cool. We'll, we'll keep I appreciate our, the fears. We'll keep, we'll keep our finger on the pulse there. We need to find something you're really scared of. Like imminently. I'll, I'll keep searching. I'll keep searching. Dude, you got a dog. Have we talked about this on the podcast? No, we, I just got him like a week ago and we were taking some time off while uh, you were away. Yeah. He's a, he's a real nut. He's a real nut house. Are you, are you sharing his name or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. A lot of people are like, are you going to share his real name? I'm like, I'm not worried about his safety. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's a lot of people are like, wait, is this like an alias? I'm like, no, this is real fucking name. <laughs> I'm not worried about you finding him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. A, a lot of people ask that. They're like, wait, is I'm that his trying, real name though? And like I'm trying to be respectful. I thought about it on the mentorship QA as well. I feel like it came up, or maybe I was thinking of something and didn't want to, you know. No, I'm I was, tr- I'm, was not funny. To, I was I'm not trying to how many people Curtis. asked. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But uh yeah, a lot of people were asking, is that his real name? Are you going to share his real name? I was like, this is his real name. Like, I'm not worried about you finding him. <laughs> makes sense. That yeah, makes sense. It's, uh, it's the name. His Curtis is the name of the middle school that my wife and I met at. So we met at Curtis Middle School. And so that's, uh, that's why we decided on Curtis. It's a good name. Little Golden Retriever. Yeah, I thought it was a good name. A couple of our friends were like, that's a weird name. I was like, what do you mean it's a weird name? They're like, it's like a human name. Like, well, yeah, I'm not going to name him like Spot or like, uh, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I like, I like human names for dogs. Like, I like Tucker. Tucker's a good dog name. Yep. You know, I like Jack. I, I like, I like human names for dogs. I'm not going to name him like, uh, I don't know. 
Phoenix or like what, what names do they give dog? You know what I mean? What would you name a dog? I haven't got that far yet, but I think it's interesting for anyone to be critical of what their friend named their pet. That seems yeah. like a weird line like, in the suck. sand. Yeah. <laughs> you need to read how to win friends and influence people because you ain't doing it right. You're not our friends anymore. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I lean towards human names. I'd have to think about that. Okay. Well, good. You'll have to keep us updated on Curtis. You're going to get a dog? You're, you're looking at dogs now? I haven't started looking yet. I haven't started looking yet. If you had to pick a breed today, and I know I, you haven't done research, but if you had to just pick one based off of the no knowledge that you have, what breed would you pick? I would be going solely off of like looks and coolness yeah. and not any yeah. other. I don't what even know. What dog them. is like I, the looks dude, the coolest? I'm, and I'm over my head here. I don't know. This is like me talking about AI overlords. Like I don't know anything about well, dogs. We already spoke about that. <laughs> 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 What's like uh, the coolest looking dog in your mind? Uh, I like different kinds of huskies. I think golden retrievers are great. My sister has a golden retriever. I like, uh, you know, like different kind of spaniels. Like I, yep, I don't know yep. what in the spaniel family. I like <laughs> like a lassie dog, a lassie kind of dog. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love lassie dogs. Um, what about like a Doberman? Yeah, uh, is that like my dog Skip? Hang on, let me look at a Doberman. <laughs> Doberman's I, a big boy. Oh, I like um, do big dogs. I like I like big dogs. Doberman or like a German Shepherd. When I was eight, my really good friend at the time, Tony Fish, got mauled by a German Shepherd right before my eyes. Oh, really? Yeah. Like bad? Yeah. Like on his face? No. It, like one of his legs just got all torn up. Had to get tons oh, of stitches. Geez. Yeah. Yeah, they're like Biden's German Shepherd has attacked like his Secret Service like twelve times or something. Really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's been on the news. Yeah, it's all over the news. That would yeah, be German on the Shepherds news. are that's, like security dogs. That seems super relevant. I'm glad that's yeah. on the news. That's <laughs> really good that they're covering that. <laughs> so you like medium sized dogs. You know, I got to do more research. I don't have strong opinions on dogs right now. Okay. I appreciate your excitement though. You do dog or cat? Dog. Yeah. Yeah. How to become a personal trainer. How to become a personal trainer. No, I, I, I know a lot of people who have cats and they like them. I think I'm really <laughs> rattled by this one story. You hear the story about the woman who had like 40 cats? And they ate her? Yeah, she passed away and her cats ate her. Yeah, dude. Gross. Makes me sus. But- I know a lot of great cat owners, so I don't know. Yeah. Susan has cats. Does she? Susan has great cats. Yeah, Susan has two cats. She's had nice. cats her whole life. She had one cat that lived until like 21 or 22 years old. Cats live that long? Yeah. Wow. Susan's cats do. She's a good cat owner. Mitch has like a bunch of cats. My videographer. Really? Cool. Yeah, he's got, he like fosters cats. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And he has his own too, but yeah. Personal trainer. You know what kind of cats I would get if I was going to get a cat? I don't know that. It's like, uh, you know those like hairless cats? Yeah. You know the one that like Dr. Evil had? That's the first place my mind went. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's for me, like, I don't know no, why, but like if I was no, going to get a cat, no, you I would. I would. I would. For, that would be the, my cat. For the comedic element? No. Because like, I just enjoy those cats. Like, I really like it's, I like those cats. That's my favorite type of cat. Hand on a Bible. Have you ever met one of those cats? Hand on a Jewish Bible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have in person? Yes. Yeah. They feel really good. It's like, I like the feel of it. Nice. <laughs> All right, steer us into some fitness, Jordan. Steer us into some fitness. Understand the audience expectations and oh, needs geez. here. That come on, you're an ESTP. I'm just gonna, some good fitness. I'm gonna that steer we're into. us away from fitness. Steer, dude, just made me think about the Baltimore Bridge today. You see that? I saw some headline about a bridge, but no, I didn't. Wow, you're so off of social media. I'm jealous, dude. A fucking like freight boat, a huge boat, like a 
like a storage boat, like a boat with a lot of shit on it, mm-hmm. hit a support beam on the on a a Baltimore bridge that's a mile and a half long, and the bridge collapsed this morning. Oh my gosh! Like, the entire bridge collapsed this morning. Yeah, and there were like there were people at on least it. seven people that were on the bridge. Yeah, I mean, f- I would, and it was for like fortunately in quotes like it happened at like 1 52 in the morning or something so there were not that many people on it but there were construction workers and some people driving as well yeah which is just like terrible yeah that steer really yeah really sad Yeah. yeah yeah sorry it's just when you said steer that's been on my feet all day about like this boat steered into the support beam man where do you want to go with this? <laughs> well, I, I was leading us to fitness, and you just gave me some real depressing news live on the air that I wasn't aware of. Okay, you want me to go to Q and A? No, no. I want you to in- give me some intuitive fitness. Intuitive fitness, jeez. I don't know. You can give me whatever's on your mind, whatever you feel like talking about, whatever interests you, new trends. Let me see. What do we got going on in the fitness world as of late? I feel like so much of my feed is just people, not even just in the fitness industry, but very much in the fitness industry as well, is like people using other people's content to hate on other people's content. That's just like, I feel like it's reached peak peak volume. It's like, that's what everyone is doing right now. They're just like, oh, let me just look at what others, someone else is doing. Let me clarify. People are using other people's content to hate on it or to hate on yeah, other- Yeah, so like, let's say you decided to come back and make a piece of content for the first time in like, since like 1987, all right? So you make yep, a piece of content. I was born. And then I, I then take your piece of content and I, I shit on it. I just uh, make fun be, of it. I say you're you stupid, whatever. No, you couldn't because it'd be so good. You just wouldn't be able no, no, to. No, I understand. I wouldn't because your content would be amazing. But like that's what people think, are doing. Remember when Facebook didn't let you publish the Hunter Biden laptop story before the election? <laughs> it would yes. be like that. Yes. Like Instagram would be like, sorry, Jordan. This piece of content this is, too, is good. too good. You cannot. <laughs> We're immediate, we're taking this down and we're removing your account because you can't make fun of this guy because no, 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 it is too good. C- continue. I I took us off track there. So you would then be like, this this is such a dumb idea. This yeah, guy's an idiot. Look at this like, idiot. He's just doing this. Like this is wrong. And it's like original content has gone so far. It's like people can't make original content anymore. So they just make fun of other people's content. It's hmm. just that's all they do. It's just like, that is my feed constantly, which I think is one reason why I'm just getting like more and more and more and more and more fed up with it. I'm just like, number one, I'm like, can't you just be fucking creative and do something yourself? And number two, it's just like, ugh, it's it's, even if you have a positive spin on it, it's inherently negative, inherently, because you're tearing someone else down in order to educate. It's like, just make your own shit. It's, it's, it's annoying right now. Yeah, it's and, really and that's annoying. and that seems like at the crux of it, it's either someone who maybe lacks creativity, doesn't know what to post, or maybe they're only going for engagement and they know that that will perform well, and so that's what yeah. they're uploading. Yeah, you this morning when we talked, you you know you said you're becoming more disenchanted, I guess, with social media in general. Yeah, I'm just tired. I'm just tired of it. But I think I think with that type of content, there's an Im, there's a more immediate sense of uh, like it's easier to get views and likes on it because people like drama, and there's automatic drama. It's like, all right, well, here's this person, and they're gonna like they're looking at what this person is saying. There's gonna be drama related to it in some way, shape, or form. So it's an easy way to drum up drama. It's drama because both accounts have a substantial following or it's drama because the topics of conversation are interesting. It's drama because there's conflict yeah. between the original content and the person who's making this new piece of content. Okay. So any conflict is drama. And so people watching, like, are, even if you're not interested in it, you're like, well, I wonder what they're going to say. And so, yeah, 
It's just needless, useless drama. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. So I think there is a way to really stand out, which is not doing that. Which which might lead to lower engagement in the short term, but way better results in the long term, better peace of mind, better staying power, actually providing information that is going to lead to people wanting to sign up for online personal training rather than people just consuming because they like the the drama. You know, what's funny too is a lot of my like, especially I'd say in the last year, my lower performing, when I say lower performing, I mean, I mean, posts that don't go viral, posts that don't get a lot of likes. The po- A lot of posts that have way lower engagement are actually posts that lead to way more sales for me. Um, posts that it's, you know, a, a good example of this actually recently is a lot of my posts more centered around mobility and flexibility. Mm-hmm. They're not going crazy. They're not like viral posts at all. But I have a lot of people both in the inner circle and joining the inner circle because they're really excited for the mobility programs that I'm putting out. And so it's even though they're not anywhere near my most popular posts by like view standards or like standards or share Mm -hmm. standards, they're getting people who are interested in this specific topic who are interested in in seeing the program, which I think is a great lesson in that. Like when you're it's when you're chasing the follows and chasing the likes and chasing the views, it's like chasing monopoly money, like we've said so much so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Did you work out when you were in Florida? Did I, Jordan's mind went to what can I ask that will get Mike excited? You're you're uh <laughs> yeah, I did. Had some great workouts down in Florida. What'd you do? Push pull leg. Just kept it rolling, you know? Your training's going well? Training's going well. Yeah. The the sun and the vitamin D is unbeatable. Are you on a mini cut right now? Um not strict. Yeah. Over the last three weeks, I'm definitely net in a deficit. Uh, but nothing crazy right now. Not like a, a severe deficit? No. There were a couple of days in there just to get things straightened out, but how's your hunger? Fine. I mean, hunger, yeah, hunger is very reasonable. When sleep's dialed in, when you're making good food choices, when you're either around maintenance or in a slight deficit, hunger's never an issue. Yeah. Yeah. But no, workouts down in Florida were good. Played basketball with Gary and his crew. Oh, yeah. I mean, they played every day. I played two of the days for two hours each, like very physical, very competitive, beat up from that. Yeah, they're, they take that really seriously. It's not like leisurely basketball. They go really hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not a basketball player. Yeah. I know something we could talk about. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What is it? (laughs) Uh, Your comment that got hidden this morning. Oh, wow. You want to dive in on that? Okay. I don't know. Let's do it. Why not? Let's do it. Why not? You want to dive in? You want to lead? Well, Jordan sent me a... Jordan sent me a link to an Instagram reel from, was it the Hodge twins that uploaded it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, it was the Hodge twins. And by the way, historically love the Hodge twins, historically. Going all the way back to their comedy days and they're like 2010, like, yeah. OGs on YouTube, banging into each other, doing their like funny stuff. Um and even like a lot of good political takes over more recent years when that has been more their shtick rather than comedy and fitness. Uh, but they were having a conversation with uh, an MMA guy and was like, first, uh, the most absurd thing, I think, was the imagery and the, like, the videos that they used overlaying the conversation which were yeah. like, I don't even know what the one guy was making fun of Jewish people by having a, like a fake nose on. Yeah. Yeah. It was very weird. It was very weird. And, and some other weird imagery, but then in their conversation, they're talking about like, is Judaism a ethnicity or is it a religion? And I don't remember a lot of it and, and I'm sure you do. So I'll let you speak on that. But I saw Sci Fitness commented. And I was like, oh, I wonder what Jordan said here. And so click the comments and couldn't find your comment anywhere. And I was like, bro, did you comment on this? Because I don't see your comment. 
and you screenshot and show me. So basically they immediately hid your comment as soon as you posted it. So the context here is that you said to me, it was either yesterday or the day before, you're like, hey man, I'm noticing like a rise in anti-Semitism, like sort of globally, like on both sides, far left, far right. And it's from from the right more than I have yeah. ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh so the context of that is like, is like yeah, there's a massive rise um in anti-Semitism. And and so then I see that post today and it comes up and and n- the thumbnail that they used was like classic Hitler era Jewish propaganda like the the imagery of a of what a Jew looks like very like 1939 1941 era like you look at a, a Hitler propaganda poster of a Jewish person it's that it was like freaking wild to see that that was the thumbnail. He was wearing like like a costume made out of money, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And he had a super long nose, and like it was it was like and he was it was very it was it was very it was shocking to see, and which was I'm sure they did it deliberately to, deliberately to get more views. And then the in, immediate conversation is the Hodge twin saying like I thought that you know Judaism was just a religion, and then the MMA fighter Jake Shields. Um, is who is vehemently anti-Israel and like I would imagine from the way he talks, uh, anti-Semitic. Um, he uh, he basically he's saying like, yeah, no, it, it's not just a religion, but like you can't just, it, it's not like a religion where any you can't just become Jewish, which by the way is wrong. Like anyone who can, wants yeah. to can convert to Judaism. My wife did it. Um, the main difference with Judaism in terms of conversion relative to other religions is that it takes a long time. You, It's not like you just go and say, I want to convert and say, I accept this God as my God. It's like, it's a, it's often years of studying. And then you actually have to present, uh, you have to have a, a, a presentation in front of what's called a Beit Din, which is like a, a group of rabbis who basically judge like not only your knowledge, but your character and before you are a- allowed to convert. So it's like, it's a long process, um, which I actually really like. So um, uh, Jake is basically, Jake Shield is just rattling off falsity after falsity after falsity in terms of like, what Jews are, what they're allowed to do, real, what like re- right, like sorry, yeah. let me What's let up? me in, let me interject real quick that to to play devil's advocate that I understand the point of confusion around ethnicity versus religion if you yep. can convert. Like yep. I, I I get that because I had the same questions in 2016 and we've had a, a yep. lot of conversations around this. Yep. So it having a question is okay, but then I'll I'll let you continue because you're going to get there. Yeah, no, no. What what were you going to say? But then there's two you're asking the question to someone who you know doesn't know the answer to the question, but then when someone ans- who does know the answer answers the question in They're your hiding com- in your comment. comment, they hide the yeah. comment. So Correct. It's, it's just, it's a very disingenuous conversation that yes. isn't actually after finding out the true answer. It's Correct. You know, there, there are other things going on there. That was the weirdest part. And the probably most worrying part is like, basically in my comment, I just explained, here's the truth uh, about Jews becoming, p- people can convert to Judaism. And here's also, we are an ethnicity and a race. Like, here's the explanation behind it. And then they hid the comment, so mm-hmm. you couldn't see it, which is like that's. And they immediately hit it, which is yeah. like very it's quickly just took it right yeah. off, which is just crazy. And that for me was like, oh man, they just. It wasn't even a counterpoint. It was just educating. Well, no, here's the a, truth of what's actually going e- on. It was an explanation. Yeah, I mean, you could yeah. you could hold it up if you wanted to, like yeah, no, no, it's all right. It, it basically, I mean, people listening, I'm I'm sure. I, I doubt we have really anti Semitics on here, but it's like, and I'm sure they understand it. But it's like, in terms of it's it's a religion. But for example, someone just like in any religion, someone could um, be Christian but not practicing, right? Someone could be Muslim but not a practicing Muslim. So like you have that aspect of it, where it's like you could be Jewish but not a, a from a, you could not be practicing from a religious perspective. But 
also if you're Jewish, uh, if you convert to Judaism, then you're seen as you're Jewish from when you were born. It's not like you're not seen as a convert. Like you were seen as you were Jewish always. So like that's that's one aspect. But then um, in terms of the race aspect, it's very easy to go back to, for example, like if you Google search the Nuremberg race laws that Hitler and the Nazis implemented uh, in Nazi Germany, um, Jews were considered a separate race. And this didn't just happen in Germany. This happened in Russia as well. Uh, this happened where like regardless of whether you were uh, practicing or not, Regardless of whether you were, you could be born Jewish, but if if you were an atheist, an atheist born Jewish, you were still seen as Jewish. You're still going to Auschwitz. You're still going to a death camp. You're still you're still Jewish as a race. You're not allowed to marry people who are not Jewish. Like you're not allowed to hold certain jobs. Can't we that, even, can't it, we even go further back than 1930s and 1940s though? Like it, yeah. what was? Because I actually don't know. Wasn't Judaism ethnic even around the time of Jesus? Like when when yeah. they talk about Jews and Gentiles, or the difference between Jews and Gentiles wasn't like we believe different things; it was in their ethnicity. Yeah. Yep. Or, and, or am I wrong in that? Because I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. Well, so in that time frame, we were they were called Hebrews. That's what they they were. I don't think they were necessarily referred to as Jews as much as they were referred to as Hebrews in that time frame. Yep. But yeah, no, like you're a hundred percent correct. It's like it's still like it, it's it's always been tied to ethnicity as well. Which, which is why, because I actually don't know. I'd have to think about it, but I don't – like when you say you can be a Christian not practicing, you can be a Muslim not practicing, I don't know if I agree in, this, in the way that you can be an atheist. Like if someone was like, I'm an atheist Muslim – then oh, they're yeah. not a, then yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. a Muslim. Like it, that's where the ethnicity right, right, portion right. comes in. Like you are that's eth true. ethnically Jewish, but I actively don't believe in God. And there's lots of atheist Jewish people in Correct. in the public sphere. Correct. And uh which which I actually think makes it more clear how it is both a religion and an ethnicity. Yeah. That 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 is a good clarification. That makes total sense. Yeah. So I was just I was taken aback that they uh they hit it, especially because they're super pro free speech. Like they're like, or they say they're super pro free speech. Mm. Um, and it seems like they're trying to seek the truth. But then as soon as usually, yeah, the, it's like it, in the interview, it's three non-Jewish people talking about Judaism. And then a Jewish person comments and says, Hey, here's how it works. And then they hide it immediately. Fucking weird. I don't even care that it's three non-Jewish people and one Jewish people. I care that it's three people who are dramatically undereducated on the topic. And then one person who knows the answer. Like if one of those people, what if all three of them weren't Jewish, but one of them knew the right answer and was like, no, 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 it's like this. And this is how it works. Correct. Yeah. Great. Great. Like, yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's one of my issues with what I'm seeing, the, the rise in Jewish hate, let's call it from the right is that those same people were staunchly anti-identity politics over the last decade when it comes mm. from the other side. And so these are the people who are like, no, like we don't want to be broken out based on categories. We want to be judged as individuals. You can be a, mm -hmm. a white person who does good or does bad. You can be black, like any ethnicity, any religion. But now, instead of looking at the behavior of an individual and judging that as good or bad, they're saying, oh, this Jewish person did this bad thing, therefore Jews are bad. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is – it's hypocritical and it's just like – it's what you, you stood against for the last however many years and now you're doing the same thing. It's a great point. Yeah. That's a super good point. It's uh... – yeah, it's wild. It's it's definitely a scary time right now. Solzhenitsyn, we need him back. The line between good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. True. Period. Yeah. Anyway, that was interesting to me. How to be a personal trainer. How to be... Uh, <laughs> look, I know you tuned in wondering how to be a personal trainer. 35 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that you've been uh, interested about? Oh, loads, but... 
that's not what this podcast is. I've actually been thinking about that. I think I need to just talk less about the things I'm interested in on this podcast because no, I, no, that's false. False. I think I do. I guarantee people are like, no, 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 don't do that. I guarantee it. Maybe. I think we need to bring back some episodes like the 20, 19, 20, 20 era where we plan things and do like the top 10 of this and pyramids of this. I think that might make some good content. I think we could do that like maybe like once a month, like one in four pods. We do that. Good. But I think the banter is really what people stay for. Okay. You know the people. Whenever I get messages about the pod, it's always about like people saying that they listen while they're working out and they literally like had to stop lifting in the middle of their set because they were laughing. Good. It's like, yeah. So like we can have have some of those like pre-planned pods where we educate, but I think the the banter is really what, what people stay for. Okay. I believe you. Any, uh, we can cut this out, but any uh, gut health updates on your end? <sighs> it's feeling good. Oh, great. Great. I was down in Florida. I went down the juice aisle, getting myself some beet juice for my pre-workout concoction. <laughs> and I saw right so we're not in a row. this out? <laughs> well, you said you're feeling good. I saw right yeah, in a row. Yeah, so keep it in. <laughs> beet juice, carrot juice. And I took a little picture, sent it over to you. The death stack. Oh, you did send it over to me. I was like, you didn't send it. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Well, yeah, for weeks now, Mike has been like, hey, can we talk about this? Can we talk about this? And I've been like, well, hold on. Well, and still, I haven't been to the GI yet. But I had a fucking, uh, be- some type of bacteria in my gut that was destroying me for like a month, like in the most uncomfortable way. And, um, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> The way you just said that and like, yeah, like literally it stunk, but like, yeah, yeah it was no not good. Intended. Yeah. But like the look on your face, yeah, it stinks. <laughs> it's not fun. Yeah, I, was, was, tr- it, I was trying to empathize. Yeah, dude, it was, it was not good. And, uh, and we were trying to figure out where it came from. Even my doctor, I had to do the whole thing. I went and got blood work done and I even had to do the whole thing where like I pooped in a fucking basket and then like gave my poop to the doctor and they had to analyze it <sighs> and it was a back and forth and back, and I had to get on antibiotics for like three weeks to get it out and we were trying to figure out what it came from and I I swear that I got it from beet juice. Hang on, let me. And Mike thinks that it wasn't from beet juice. You're you're rewriting history right now, my brother. I'm not. <laughs> so let me <laughs> let me step in. Let me take over the mic. So first of all, when you were explaining to me what was going on, do you remember what I told you to do? No. Think. I think you remember. This is before you had seen the second doc. Whatever doctor gave you the antibiotics. This was before you went to that doctor. Okay. I said. Come on, dig deep. What did you say? You remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I said it's very likely a bacterial infection and you need to run antibiotics. Oh, yeah, you did say that. Yeah, you did. And then you went to the doctor and, and did that, which was great. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there was what? the... So you, I, beet juice and carrot just juice. Just, well, there was the yeah. there was the conversation I have here from like a month ago. You said it was the beet Are juice. You looking in your notes, yeah, you it was notes. PT <laughs> pod. I take notes for the pod. Jordan, <laughs> it was the beet juice. It gave me the virus. I'm positive, Mike. Usually viruses would come from eating undercooked meats. Jordan, nah, I don't eat undercooked meats. Pa- <laughs> pause. Jordan, wait, fuck beef tartare. Had a raw egg in it. <laughs> but then you claim you had symptoms prior to that, which, which, yeah, my cool. wife, because I brought that up to my wife. I was like, oh shit, I did have that. And she was like, no, that doesn't count because you already were having symptoms when you had that. And I, and I forgot because she literally said, as I ordered the beef tartare, she was like, your stomach isn't feeling good. Are you sure you want to have that? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I honestly, 
I I would imagine that a significant contributing factor to all of this, like we get exposed to viruses consistently and we don't always get super sick from them. And a lot of that has to do with our own immune system. You were in a very high stress period, uh, launching the, the inner circle app, which took a ton of time and effort and a lot going on. And there was worry around how the launch would be and how the app would be received. Like th- there were multiple moving pieces around that time where your stress levels were very high. I would imagine that that is what led to you ending up so symptomatic for such a long time. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, I th- I really think it was the beet juice and I've been hesitant to get beet juice since then, but I need to get the good kind. I need to get the Nudsen. The is it Nudsen or Knudsen? I, I don't understand like I love carrot juice though. Look, maybe we're both just kind of idiots like out of our depth on this, but I don't think that that there's I don't think people get foodborne illness or like bacteria <laughs> from juice. Like that just doesn't happen. It, it, that isn't Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I have no idea. You were so hot on beet juice and carrot juice for like four, d- four days in there too. You were just chugging Dude, it. I know. I was. I, that's where I think I got it. I think I overdid it. <laughs> but look, I don't know. I do love that stuff. I'll get back on it. It really, I feel so good when I have that stuff. Yeah. Beet juice, carrot juice, and ginger. It's like. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's a correlation between high levels of NEAT and ADHD? Uh, I would imagine for sure. Yeah, I would absolutely imagine that if you have ADHD. And I also feel like, and this might be an uneducated, uneducated perspective, but I feel like ADHD in and itself is a spectrum. It's not just like you have it or you don't. Yeah. I would imagine that there's like higher and lower levels of it. For sure. And like the higher levels of it that you have. Mm-hmm probably the more neat that you have. Yeah. Even just from the perspective of like uh never mind neat, but like I would imagine almost like more brain activity. Yeah. Right? So we know that the brain requires glucose and and it functions off of glucose and like that like you can literally someone who thinks a lot or if like you spend a whole day studying, you'll burn more calories just from the brain activity. I would imagine that someone with ADHD has a higher energy output just from what the fuck they're thinking about, never mind, and also including also the movement that they have. Yeah, I think you're right. You agree with that? Yeah, I do. I also agree with the the spectrum theory and, and just like whether or not you want to classify it as like an actual disorder, there's definitely a collection of symptoms that – some people have more than others and i would argue are increasing based on environment in the last 5 to 10 years meaning some people who might have been more okay as children are developing some of the same symptoms from technology and screen use and and lifestyle primarily i bet that for sure i also feel like So many of things that they're diagnosing as ADD or ADHD are like normal things. Yeah. Yeah. I I see because I've I'm diagnosed with it. And like I see a lot of people being like, oh, like I have it. I have it now. And and I'm like, well, what what are your symptoms? Oh, I just really struggle to concentrate. And I'm like. Okay, (laughs) like like it's also like to your point, yeah, especially if you're addicted to your fucking phone. Yeah. And yeah, like it's not because you have ADHD as much as it is because you're just addicted to your fucking phone. Yeah. That it's like your phone is addictive, especially when you get on things like Instagram that use the same algorithms as slot machines, which are addictive. It's like, I feel like we're just almost lackadaisically saying people have X and saying people have Y when in reality it's like, I don't know, maybe we look at what their lifestyle is like and we realize that like their behaviors are pretty normal, especially, especially relative to the addictive behaviors that they've adopted. 
you know? Or look at their lifestyle and see like, oh, you spent three hours scrolling mindlessly before bed, you know, got right. not very much sleep of pretty poor quality, woke up, scrolled for an hour and a half, and then tried to go straight into difficult computer work. Right. Like, no wonder you yeah. couldn't focus. Your your dopamine was completely depleted. You wouldn't take a gambling, a, you have a gambling addict, right? Someone who's just at the slot machines all the time, whatever it is. And they're like, oh, I just really struggle to concentrate on work. It's like, oh, you have ADHD. It's like, no, you're addicted to gambling because when you're not working, you're just gambling all the time. It's like, that's what people are doing with social media. They're yeah. fucking constantly on social media. I have a really yeah. hard time concentrating. No, you have this is it, you've developed an addiction to this fucking thing. Yeah. And taking Adderall isn't gonna fix it. <laughs> well, well, it will temporarily, but there will be long term consequences. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's it's very interesting. Um, and the, it's worrisome, obviously for adults, but I would say more worrisome for children. Hundred percent. You're just like giving these drugs to kids. Five year old like, gets a script, dude. Like, yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's really, really bad. Yeah, I don't think it's natural to have kids be like expected to sit down quiet for however many hours a day and pay attention to a lecture. I just don't, I don't think that's natural. And like, I struggled with that immensely as a kid. And it's like, I just don't think we're supposed to. You're, what you're describing is what I'm sure you were diagnosed with, which is the hyperactivity end of the categorization. There's also just uh, an inattentiveness end of it where you'll have a kid. Right. And this is more in, in girls and women actually, where there isn't a hyperactivity component, but there is just like a significant inability to focus on anything that they're not interested in, which is like the the daydreamer archetype. It's interesting, especially because the the hyperactivity part mm -hmm. inherently implies that there you have an excess of activity. Mm -hmm. You're like you you have excess energy. Mm -hmm. It's just like I don't know. I feel like a nine year old kid should have a lot of energy. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Cause I don't think it's, I, maybe, I don't know, are you conditioning these kids to be hypo active? Uh, uh, I don't understand. Maybe they're just very, the, the kids that you say are like are, are neutral active have, have the right amount. Maybe they're just so fearful of reprimand and the hyperactive kids that you've deemed hyperactive are just like, they're not as fearful of the reprimand. And so they're just whatever, you know what I mean? That was me. Like, I just didn't care. And and the solution to that seems pretty straightforward, which is uh, a higher percentage of physical activity during the school day and a lower percentage yes. of sit down and listen. It can't be 95% yeah. sit down and listen, 5% go play for 15 minutes. It, right. Like it, you, that isn't optimal. It was so bad when I was in school because if I – acted out, which I would all the time. They'd kept keep me in from recess and then that like made it worse. And then during lunch, you're not allowed to go and visit other tables and move around. Like you have to sit down at your one table. And it's like the whole day you're just supposed to sit down and not move. Mm -hmm. It's like, what the fuck do you expect? And then you're labeled as you have, you're hyperactive. It's like, no, you're a kid. <laughs> it's, yeah. it, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, all right. So Cat Daddy asked a really unique question. Uh, I was going to answer it on my Q&A and I might at some point. Um, I don't think anyone's ever asked me this before. What was a mindset that you had to adjust and how did you do it? I think I've talked about this before, but and, and it's pretty cliche and straightforward. But if anyone has read about a fixed versus a growth mindset, uh, which is essentially a growth mindset being the belief that you can change and improve yourself in any arena through hard work, discipline, uh, versus a fixed mindset, which would be, this is just the way I am. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, I don't know that I ever necessarily had a fixed mindset, but I definitely developed more of a growth mindset through like middle school and into high school being a not amazing athlete and then uh getting cut from a team in eighth grade a hockey team and realizing that it's actually within my control how much better i want to get at this sport 
Like, do I want to mm. shoot 300 pucks a day in the off season? Do I want to do plyometrics? Do I want to like, because if I do these things, then I'm going to be better on the ice. So like, this is all a decision that I can make. Um, was a mindset shift that then carried over into school. And like, I, I would attribute that experience in sports in general to me being competitive around grades, study more, work harder, get better grades, higher class rank, like could potentially get into better college. Like all of that snowballed into future uh, potential for accomplishment. I like that. What, what you want to briefly explain like fixed first growth mindset? Growth mindset in a growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Got it. Fixed mindset is a way of thinking about your own intelligence and abilities. Specifically, it describes viewing your intelligence and abilities as innate and unchangeable. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that a lot. I think uh, for me, when I was younger, I think um, I very I fell into the wanting to be a victim. Mm. like almost using using any victimhood as a justification for bad behavior or for uh not performing as well as I could have and um and you know it's funny cuz JP has spoken about it and some of the stuff that he's spoken about has resonated with me deeply where he's spoke this this one line or idea cuz it's not a verbatim quote but the idea of like it's it's very addicting to be attached to your victimhood, right? It's it's an addicting feeling to be like, this is what I've suffered, this is what I've gone through, and this justifies my behavior now. And to have to see the empathy that people will give you because of your victimhood, and to feel the sympathy, and to feel the the how people will allow you to get away with things because of what you've been through can be very addicting. Uh, and so for me, when I was younger and when I say younger, I mean like young, like young teens to like mid to late teens, really relying on that as a strategy of getting through life. Whereas eventually getting to a point of being like, it's just gross for me. Like this is not helping me at all. It's not a good look for me. It's not going to last and shifting from the victim to the regardless of whatever's happened, I have control and like I'm going to take personal responsibility. So it's that like victim versus personal responsibility mindset shift. And I think that for me is probably my biggest one that I've gone through. Huge. That I can think of right now. Huge. Yeah. Because no one cares if you're, even if you are a victim, no one cares. Yeah. Correct. Like what are you going to do? It's not, when we say no one cares, yes, it's partly like no one cares, but it's also like, it doesn't matter. Right? Like that's really what it boils down to for in for me. It's like, your victimhood, it doesn't matter in the sense of like, it doesn't justify bad behavior, period. Correct. Right? Correct. So if you treat someone poorly, it doesn't matter that like, I understand and I, and like, I care and I'm like, it sucks that you went through that, but like, fuck you for doing it to someone else. And it doesn't justify you treating someone else poorly. And mm -hmm. so like, that's mm -hmm. when I say it, no one cares that's what I mean. It's like, it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's done. It's over now. Now, what are you going to do about it? And like, if your answer is this happened to me, so I can do it to someone else or I can treat someone else poorly in a different way because of what's happened to me. Can you give an example of how I did it or how other people do it? Or yeah, maybe like, you know, when you're talking about passing on, like, you know, someone, someone doing something to you, you are, could be a victim. Yeah. I, I mean, there are so many I mean, we could use a classic example of like, uh, of, of being abused, like, which is like, a, a, you know, we see this all the time. Um, someone's abused when they're younger and then they become an abuser as they get older. Like, and the statistics on this are, are pretty clear that if you are 
abuse as a child, like you're more likely to become an abuser as you get older, especially like young boys. If they're abused as a young kid, they're more likely to become abuse to, to become abusers. And I, I think the statistics for for young girls are if they're abused as a young girl, they're more likely to become abused as they get older. They mm. go into those relationships. Um so it, it's it's though that's the first one that comes to mind. But I the way that I think about it is almost in like smaller uh like everyday type like almost less serious type things where it's like um you were lied to so now you start lying to other people right it's like you like like little things it's not even like big massive things that are uh as bad as physical abuse it, it's like little daily acts like the the things that that were done to you that now you do to other people the lies, the deceit, things like that, I think are, uh, and then justifying it based on how you were treated or you were brought up. Cool. You know, where my mind goes with that is, and this could potentially be helpful for, uh, single men is to like the incel community. You'll see guys in there who adopt a victim mindset of I'm only five, eight. Girls, no girl's gonna like me because I'm oh, only because I'm yes. only five foot eight. So what's yep. the point in even trying? Like just getting black pilled, and and there can be good reason for why they've adopted that mindset based on their life. But that's like the classic example of my mind of. Sh- well, first of all, like you could be shorter, right, and and still absolutely <laughs> crush it, but it, it, like. There are certain traits that are not within your control, and then there are tons of things that are within your control. So sitting around and being a victim, hoping someone's going to feel bad for you versus taking action on the things that you can do to improve yourself, like there's a very clear route here. Yeah, I see that one a lot. I got in a a fight with someone, not a fight, uh, a debate with someone about this years ago on Twitter this guy was going off being like, what did he say? What's the word? Um, it was, there, there's a whole word uh, about like uh, a dudes being short and like a, a stigma against like short dudes. Dah, dah, dah. I forget what the word is, but there's a whole word. And he was like, yeah, you know, it's just girls aren't attracted to guys who are shorter. Dah, dah, dah. And it's like on I, he, and he was just going off complaining. He had a big audience. And he was getting a lot of engagement around it. And I was pissed off. I was like, dude, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, shut up. Mm-hmm. It's, this is, this is why, by the way. And, and like, if we actually like break down, like, yeah, I think biologically and evolutionarily, I think women generally tend to be more attracted to taller guys. I also don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think that's anything to be like, to hate women for in the same way. Like, they're biologically evolutionarily guys have things that they think are more attractive in women as well. Like same thing. I don't think either one should be demonized. I think it's just like, yeah, this is, let's just understand biology evolution. Like this makes sense. With that being said, what's even more unattractive than being short is complaining about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that, mm-hmm. that compounds it by a factor of a hundred. Mm-hmm. It's just like, you want to make it even worse is let's just complain. Mm-hmm. And so I, I feel like uh, I got in a big debate with him about it. And I was like, listen, I, and he was like five, six or five, eight, or I think he was like five, eight. And I was like, dude, I'm five, four. Like, and that's on a good day. Like sometimes we go to the doctor and they're like, you're five, three. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so it depends on the day. So like, it really, it depends on, on so much, but it's, it's really about how you carry yourself. Mm. Um, And especially, especially for men from like that height perspective, Um, ironically, whenever I've posted about this on social media, because I have some like, and like WNBA uh, players who follow me and like, uh, like tall women who follow me and they're like, it's so crazy because I feel the exact same way you feel, but like, I use the same words as you, but flip short for tall Mm -hmm. and like, that's how they feel. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's very interesting how like it will, it can work in reverse, but so much of it is just how you carry yourself, especially as a man where it's like there, I have some friends who are like my height, uh, especially growing up. I, I had some friends who were like my height, but there were these guys that their energy about them 
it's it's like you don't think about it. You don't think about their height at all. Like maybe initially when you first see them, oh wow, like they're really short. But like within a minute, they just have this huge energy. And it doesn't mean that they're loud and boisterous, it just means they're so comfortable and confident with who they are mm-hmm. that like it's not even something you consider anymore. Mm-hmm. But when someone they make it their identity and they, it becomes part of this victimhood, it's like it's just arguably the most nauseating and unattractive thing that you can do is just make that your identity. And that goes for being short for men, but for making anything your victimhood, like in any, like when, if you make whatever your victimhood is like your, your persona, Mm -hmm. it's gross Mm -hmm. period. It's just, it's just not, not a good look. Spot on, spot on brother. Should we do one more? Oh, wow. We're going for a long one today. We're giving the people a long one. We get high energy. We're only recording one today. All right. B S Lager 78 said, what do you recommend for back exercises for someone who sits a lot for work? I feel like we have answered this question. Oh, really? No, 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 no. no. I still like it. Let's do it. It's a good one. But I feel like we've answered it conventionally several times over the years on the pod. So I'm going to okay. go- I'm going to answer it unconventionally? I'm going to go unconventional. I'm not just going to give you- Okay. Back. We can give some back exercises. But for someone who- I was- Working in corporate America for two years, public accounting, 50, yep. 55, 60 plus hours a week. And something intuitively felt so wrong about being in this room from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then sometimes on Saturdays in a chair, hunched over a computer. Like there were many. Gives me the heebie jeebies. Me too. There were many known known reasons why I didn't like it, but there were also intuitive reasons that I only know in hindsight why I didn't like it. And one of them was the expectation to sit there in a seated position, not moving, not getting any blood flow indoors for extended periods of time. And I could feel, I felt like it was my soul being crushed, but I think it was also my health. And one of the changes that I've made being in control of my own schedule at this point. And and I actually made changes then too. I did a lot of like, like these other accountants definitely made fun of me on day four of this client. I walked in with, you know, we're, we're at a, we're at a blue chip, like fortune 30 company auditing their financial statements. And I walk into the audit room with uh, an end table, like a, like a shitty plastic end table. And I set it on top of the table and I put my computer on top of that. And I'm just standing there working and people are laughing and like <laughs> taking pictures. And like one of the managers was like, really? I, I don't know if you should be doing that. Yes. Yes. The most square people. Yeah, you must have been so pissed. I was like, I'm going to show you. Um, so even at the time I was trying to make an effort to do something different. And it's not just not being in the seated position. A lot of pain from sitting ends up being a result of uh, uh, frequency of postural changes. So someone can, you can have two people who are both sitting for eight hours a day, but one person who's sitting consistently for that time. And one person who's taking a two minute break to stand up, twist, like walk around a little bit. When you're moving around more frequently, you're going to end up feeling better. So, you know, I don't know if you're working at home. I've started doing emails laying on the floor on my stomach, doing more things on the floor. Um, I think that's a big one. We joked about this a couple of years ago when I first moved here of having this space and laying in the, on the ground and doing like banana rolls and like just getting into positions that you normally don't get in in day-to-day life unless you're really focused on your mobility like like some of us are. But oh, yeah. finding ways to get into those positions leads to you feeling better. So we can talk about back exercises, but I think – just not sitting at your computer for eight straight hours and doing anything else is one of the best things you can do to feel better over time. Dude, I love that. I love that's got to be a clip. We got to clip that one, David. That was so good. And uh, I completely agree. You know, it's one of those things. It was a really classic thing at gyms when I first started coaching when I was like 14, 15, 16. All the coaches would always tell their clients, they'd be like, hey, I only see you one, two, three hours a week, like all the hour, other hours at home, like those matter more, especially for fat loss. And and I also feel like, yeah, it's the same thing for movement. It's like, I'm only seeing you for a couple hours a week. And mm-hmm. like, if I'm not seeing you, like you're training yourself, you really think like 
10 sets, which is a lot, by the way, if you're doing 10 sets for your back at the end of the week, like that, that's going to make a massive difference. Like if the rest of the hours of the week, like you're just doing the same shit over and over and over again. So Mm -hmm. changing your daily habits is absolutely essential. And uh, the the add on to that, instead of going with the standard, like dumbbell rows, uh, lat pull downs, instead of doing that shit, let's just go like real, just, uh, uh, like alternative, um, your spine is designed to move in every direction. It's just, it's designed to move. It's not designed to stay still. It's not designed to, to just not rotate, to not bend. And so for me, like, dude, I'll tell you what, Jefferson curls have been so freaking good for my back. And I've had devastating back injuries before. And people get mad when I talk about this recently, but I'm not encouraging someone who's been sitting at a desk for 22 years and like has issues to load up a barbell and start doing Jefferson curls, but you can start doing movements that challenge the, the movement of your spine. Like even something like a cat cow, right? Cat cow, get your spine moving Mm -hmm. elephant walks, get your spine moving. Uh, I would say those are super good. You know what I like as well? In addition to cat cows, elephant walks, Jefferson curls, Superman's. Mm-hmm. Like Superman's like demonized exercise by mm-hmm. the science-based community for a long time. It's like, why? Superman's are a great drill when you do them properly and you progress them properly. Mm-hmm. Like Superman's awesome, awesome exercise. Um, if you can do in like an overhead Superman and hold that for like 60 seconds, that's pretty freaking good. I think that's like a really good drill to be doing. Um, I, I think- working, um, working, working up to 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah, like starting off with 10 seconds and not hands overhead. Um, it's just start there. Um, dude, lateral bending, mm-hmm. big fan. Like it's, and it's funny, like people see the lateral bending, like, and they think it's like an oblique exercise. Yeah, you can do it to work your oblique, but you can also do it for spinal movement. Yeah. Like you can do it without, like, not necessarily to try and get thicker abs, but more just do it to move your spine properly. Right. Love it. And not just doing it laterally, but doing it slightly forward, slightly backwards. Um, you know what? I think one of my favorite movements that I've been doing with Lucas in range of strength has been a reverse Jefferson curl, which I didn't even know existed until I started doing it with him where I get light dumbbells. I think I use like, I think now I'm up to either 15s or 20s, but I essentially stand maybe like half a foot away from the wall and I, and I have dumbbells in each hand and I arch backwards with the dumbbells in my hand and until my belly button hits the wall and then I come back and like I had to work up to this and when you just start out you can start super close to the wall and you shouldn't use any weight when you first start and just work on developing that spinal extension backwards so you can do this Jefferson curls forwards reverse Jefferson curls backwards oh my god dude it feels absolutely amazing and my back feels the best that it's felt since I was a teenager. That's amazing. Yeah. Feels better than when you were pulling 4X body weight? Infinitely better. (laughs) Infinitely better than when I was doing that. Yeah. It's a great answer. Yep. Move, baby. That's it. We need more movement. And I really, I feel for people who are stuck in day-to-day routines that don't allow them to get much movement in, especially when they, you know, yeah, you know, you have the the responsibility of a family. You m- might be under pressure in terms of bills. If even if the job you're working is one that doesn't allow you to move as much as you want, you're in a position where you need the paycheck. Like I'm empathetic to those situations, but for anyone who isn't there yet, I just I think there's a real. I've talked about this so many times, but I don't I don't hear anyone else talking about this. The the materialism and consumerism in the West seems to drive a need to work certain types of jobs to make enough money to fund a lifestyle but the the your set of behaviors that you exhibit from working that job are not good for your health there's the age at what's it called adage age old adage age old adage of you know we sacrifice our health to make money and then pay money to get our health back when yeah it almost seems like you don't need to do that. 
but then we, I don't know if I would take this advice. If you told 25 year old Mike, like, Hey, having X amount more money, isn't going to make you happier. Isn't going to make your life better. Like you can work less and focus more on your health. Now. I don't know if I would have listened at that point. You almost need to, you definitely would not have. I definitely would not have. You definitely <laughs> need to go. Well, I would not have because I'm stubborn and, and kind of an idiot, but I think people, other people might be better at other heeding, might, heeding yeah. the advice of others and, and learning from others' mistakes rather than making mistakes yourself and thinking, oh no, I am, I'm going to adjust my lifestyle. I actually don't need to do these things that aren't great for my health to get more. I'm going to let my foot off the gas a little bit, do some things that are better for my health. I, I think on a population scale, like that is something that's actually within the control of the individual and something that we're missing and something that would make people's lives a lot better. Dude, completely agree. Clip that. Clips Nation, baby. Thanks for listening to the How to Become a Personal Trainer podcast. Mm. If, uh, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, we are uploading on YouTube many times a week. We got clips. We got full episodes there. We got shorts there. Uh, we would really appreciate you subscribing. It's personal trainer podcast is the name over on YouTube. We'll throw a link in the show notes and yeah. Thank you for listening. We might, we, should we, should we do a sale for the mentorship soon? I feel like we haven't done a sale in a while. Maybe we haven't done a sale for a while. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. You definitely should apply, apply a link in the show notes if you want to apply to join, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll do a sale. Maybe we won't either way. We'd love to have you in there. Have a great day and a great week. See you soon.